All right, we have got in our life talk today, Jessica and Cody Shelley. If you guys want to come up, Pastor Jason has some questions for them. They're going to testify the goodness of God in their life. Um, we used to do live talks about once a month, but from the build out, we kind of got away from that. But this was something the Lord had been putting on our hearts for a couple of weeks. So you're going to be so blessed, be encouraged. So I first met Cody when he was just a wee little toddler at the YMCA. His grandmother worked behind the opening desk. And I'd go in to work out, and he would be just running around that little fireball hair, <laughs> red hair, um, sweetest little kid. Then I had him at West Middle School. Now, I was assistant principal secretary. So the disciplined kids came right to my desk and then to the assistant principal's office. <laughs> and who shows up one day? Mr. Cody. Um, but the Lord strategically had me there for a season, and what I would do is pray over these young people. I'd call them forth. I would even look up the meanings of their name. I'd call them forth of who God says they are. His grandma was a Christian, amazing young lady, um, went on to be with the Lord. So I knew, I knew his hand, the Lord's hand was on this young man. So um, he, he specifically recalls um, the one day he was supposed to meet the assistant principal, and um, he didn't get kicked out or really any big consequence. And I had told him later in life when I met him, we, God reconnected us, how I'd pray for him and some of those young men and young ladies. Anyway, it's awesome to see and be a part of um, what God's doing in his life and in his wife, Jessica's life. So enjoy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Guys, it is so good to be here with um, Jessica and Cody this morning. Um, you know, I, you know, some of my testimony in my life, you know, of uh, dealing drugs and just doing things in the world, you know, and living in the world and having four dads by the time I was 16, you know, and a lot of you have been through things in life that have, that have, could have taken you down a road or has taken you down a road that is just basically destroyed your life but God but God grabbed a hold of you just like he grabbed a hold of me to change me to change my lifestyle and how I and I come to a point in my life where um, I just had this crossroad and I had to make a decision what I wanted to do in life whether I wanted to um, do what's right or not and I remember that first Cody I remember that first stepping stone when when I was getting in trouble all the time. I was married at the time and, and, and um, had one child. And I remember that I saw these police officers arresting this young man. And, and I thought, for the first time in my life, I thought, I want to be on that side of it. I want to, I want to, be, I want to be the one chasing people and not the one being chased, you know. And because I, I was chased so many times, I hid so many times, and they didn't catch me so many times. And um, so I was just so grateful for, for that. And, you know, when I met Cody, that was where he was. He was running, running, running from God. The bicycle that's over there is what I saw him on, that, that always on the bicycle. And he used that bicycle to run drugs um, throughout Martinsville. And so he's going to take the bicycle to the scrapyard, I think, tomorrow and, or whenever it's open again and scrap that thing and uh, get a little bit of his money back. But I'm just grateful for you, Cody and Jessica, for what God is doing in your life. So I want to ask a few questions this morning, um, and I know that it's going to be deep, and, and, and uh, Shelly, we might need some Kleenexes up here um, because I know I probably will be crying. Jessica, I'm going to start with you. Um, what is one of your... What is one of your worst, worst moments in, in your life that, I mean, I know you've got a lot of things that have happened in your life, but what, what are one of the worst moments that you have uh, battled with um, before you met Cody outside of relationship with Cody? Um, I was on meth with an ex and 
Uh, my son was abused by him, and I got arrested, charged with child neglect, and he, my child was taken away. He was only three years old. Yeah, so, so she was in a situation where she had this young three-year-old child, and, and this man had abused the child, had, had neglected the child, and she was strung out on drugs to the point that she couldn't intervene. And so she got the child taken away from her. And, and that's what drugs will do to you. It'll, it take, it's sin will take you further than you ever, ever want to go. You know, it'll take you to those places you don't ever want to go. And, um, and so, Jessica, God is, I want you to know this morning, God, and God is going to redeem those things in your life. God is going to redeem the things that were stolen from you, that the enemy stole from you. All of it's going to be redeemed. I want you to know that this morning. And I want you to know that you know now there's no guilt, there's no shame. Never carry that. We use the things that we've been through like that as a testimony to what we can say that we've overcome. And this is the testimony, you know. And I told him this morning when we met in the office, you know, I said, any of you, if anything that you ever do in life triggers something and brings that, a trigger brings a bad feeling, you need to deal with that situation. Because those triggers, we need to turn those triggers into testimonies. Those triggers will become a point of joy and happiness. And they're like, I went through that, but God brought me through it, and I'm here now. And that's what triggers will do, turn into testimonies of what God can do. And so, Cody, uh, one, of your, one of your darkest moments. Hold the mic up so we can. Is it on? There, it's on. One of mine is uh, I lost my son, AJ. He was eight. I put drugs in the vehicle for my ex to go to Georgia, and they ended up, she ended up killing both of them when she was shooting up and driving. So. So if you couldn't hear him, what he said was he had us an eight-year-old, had an eight-year-old son whose name was AJ, and he had put drugs in the car. His um, ex took off with the car and she was shooting up while she was driving down the road and went off the road and killed her and her her son his son his eight-year-old boy and so you know again sin will take you deeper than you ever want to go but Jesus Jesus Cody you know now that your son AJ is in heaven yeah. rejoicing yes excited yes. about you excited about what God is doing in your life right now so I'm just grateful for that Cody I'm grateful for that. Um, just that just that time that you got to spend with him. The time that you got to spend with with AJ. What what precious time we hold on to those times, those moments, those memories that we got to um, have them. And again, no guilt, no shame should come to you. That's from the enemy, that's not from God at all. None of it is ever from God. So in your guys' relationship, um, what is, what is some of the, and, and will both of you ask the same question, what, as you guys got together, what is some of the battles, the deepest battles that you went to as a marriage couple? And I know, I know in your past life you went through so many things before you guys met, but what is some of the things that you guys have struggled with as a married couple? Either one of you can go. I didn't know about his son. I didn't even know he had a son. So right off the bat, a lie or a deception came in or the truth was not there. She did not know about the son. And so how did that, I mean, how did that affect your relationship with, with Cody? It was really hard to trust him. Yeah, yeah. And Cody, why didn't you tell her? What, what was your reasoning for not letting her know? Do you? I'm scared it would run her off. Okay. Truth will set everything free. He spoke truth to her, finally spoke truth to her, and in that, they worked through it. That's what you do in a marriage. You work through situations. You work through struggles. You work through battles. You don't just quit. With church, you work through struggles and battles. You don't just quit. We're family. So you have to learn to just say, we're going to work through this situation, and we're not going to quit. So, Cody, what was one of the, the biggest things that you've struggled with in your, as a relationship with you and Jessica? Just hiding drugs from her all the time and money. Hiding drugs, hiding mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that work really good for you? No. No. Never works out. 
<laughs> didn't work out for you. It didn't never. pan out. No, you never. No money hidden in the walls anywhere. No. No. Yeah. So, and I want you guys to know that Cody, Cody and Jessica, um, they are they are friends of mine. They they are true friends of mine, and they have grown so much in the Lord. I got my notes keep kicking off here. They have grown so much in the Lord. And so, Jessica, I want, I want to know um, who in your life was praying for you? Like, who, like, you know, because we always, we all have someone that prayed for us that, to get us to this point that we're at. You know, there's people praying for me. I had no idea they were praying for me. So who do you think was praying for you? Um, I know my mom and dad and my grandma. And I have an aunt that prayed for me, yeah. like, yeah. all the time. All the time. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That's good. What about you? Mine would have to be Shelly. Twyla and my grandma. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's good. Shelly was, and Shelly told me about Cody years ago. Um, I learned about him, the little boy that would come in and, and uh, get in trouble, and, and she would pray for him, and Cody remembers that, and that, that you know, that helped him um, get through some of the things, knowing that someone was on his side, even though he felt worthless, even though he felt that he wasn't valued at all. And so, and I know, Jessica, you, we talked about you grew up not feeling validated, like you felt like that you were not valuable at all. And Cody, you as well, you know, um, just the trash talk that your father had told you that you're worthless and he didn't have time for you. He didn't have time. Yeah. So I tried to make up with my dad after all the drugs and everything at Walmart like two months ago. And he was like, oh, just blow it off, you know. I'm not going to talk to him. And then I found out from a family member just like a month ago that he was around them saying that he's not worth his time, so on and so forth, that I'm just trash and never have been worth his time. But I also know that when I was a baby, my dad held a gun to my mom and me. So... So when you pray for someone, I want you to know it, it's effective. Continue to pray for the ones you love. Continue to pray for your sons and daughters. It's effective. You might not be seeing the result of it right now, but, but the result will come. The result will come. The, prayer of, the Bible says the, prayer of a, the fervent prayer of a righteous man will avail of much. Your prayers will avail of much. And the prayers that were prayed over these two people availed much and so we're just excited about it Shelly do you have something you want to say my wife is I told you she will sit up here you want to stand up behind me or you want to sit in this seat here come here here come here let me say okay I want to just add this real quick so um, and I don't know what his notes say but um so I believe a year ago, this past June, is when we started seeing a lot of life change happen in Jessica and Cody. And I want to back up even a few months, about, about four months, about four months before that, we had our Miss Linda shots. You want to raise your hand? Linda felt impressed by the Holy Spirit to go sit in another part of our sanctuary in the other building. So this is, this is intercession. She didn't know why. She said, I feel the Lord saying to go sit over here. And so she sat there for months. And look who walks in the door. And they sat right in front of her every week. She didn't know them. I mean, obviously she introduced herself. But she prayed for them. She'd pray for them throughout the week. There was always prayer going on for these two through Linda. Linda may not be the only one that has experienced this, but I, I have to share the power of intercession is great. And when the Lord puts somebody on your heart, just be obedient to what it is. Because it was just a couple months later, they think, we're going to get in the water and see what this pool's about. And what, what Jesus is doing in the water. Maybe he can change our hearts, take away this pain and hurt, you know, the rejection, the just everything, blah, whatever. You know, we've all experienced it different times in our lives. So they get in the water, and it was amazing. 
they kept getting in the water. They went to counseling. They were encouraged by other believers. Um, they consider Linda their mom or grandma. You know, she just loves them. There has just been a bond. And, she, and Linda's not the only one. There's several others that the Lord has put, Cody and Jessica, on your heart. And um, thank you for praying for them. It has really, truly been amazing to see in one year your life change that's happened. And, and again, healing is a process. It's the miracle that's instant, which you've all probably experienced things in the water that have left you is why you're not selling drugs and running that bike because it's not in you anymore. Jesus, you died well. Pastor Todd Smith says, die well. So they left their junk in the bottom of that pool and Jesus resurrected life within them. Wouldn't we agree? Yeah. Yeah. And not only life, but restoration. There are things being restored within both of them that were lost or stolen. And that's just the wonder works of the Lord that his outstretched hand of deliverance totally turned lives around. And that is what we have seen with Jessica and Cody. So, <laughs> if, if, you, if you ever wanna have a good marriage, let your wife hijack the situation at any given time. Let your wife hijack it, because it's, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. Thank you, Shelly. So, um, again, I remember Cody, um, when I first met him, um, he's riding his bicycle right down the road, and, and uh, he helped us over the other church pour some concrete, and then um, I asked him to come over our house and do some work, and, and he did. He, he's a hard, hard worker when he would come. When he would come to work, he would work hard, but then when you'd pay him, he'd be running and doing drugs, and I know at that time they were both you know, afraid that they were cheating on each other and all this stuff was going on and things had happened. And so, um, and there was one day that I had a hammer that was missing. I was like, where is my hammer? I mean, I knew I had that hammer. I looked, I crawled underneath the house looking for this hammer. And I even said it in front of Cody. I said, where, is, man, I've lost that hammer. And I was like, I knew I had those three hammers. There's one missing. I, I knew where my stuff was. And, um, and one day Cody come to, to work, he dropped, off, dropped him off in the morning, and Jessica would always drop him off, and sometimes she would just wait there and just wait all day long and wait on him, and uh, read books, she would just read, read, read. And Cody said, he said, I have something to tell you, and I said, what? He said, um, I stole that hammer. Yeah. And I could have responded in a way of like, get off my job, get out of here. But I didn't because the Lord has taught me so much. I didn't respond that way to a, a hammer because I know that his soul is more valuable yeah. than a hammer. The words that I was getting ready to speak at this moment to him was more valuable than any possession that I could ever have. And uh, so do you remember what I had said to you at all? Give me the hammer. It's okay. I love you. I forgive you. Now get to work. <laughs> just took the hammer back and just said, let's, let's get back to work. You know, um, and that's what we have to do in life, guys. We have to remember not to hold anything against anybody, you know, at all. It doesn't matter what they've done to us. Forgiveness is what we're called to do is forgive other people for the wrongs they've done to us Even though they hurt some hurts are so deep. I know Jessica some of the hurts that you've had in life of, of Just the words that were spoken onto you that you have No value and we break that off right now in Jesus name because you're full of value and God's got so much in store for you So much in store for you and Cody you know, your dad's saying that, you know, I, I just don't have time for that. It's just a worthless situation. That's no truth in that. There's no truth in that because you have value. I know you guys are still struggling with some stuff. I know you guys are still struggling with vaping. I know you're still struggling with smoking. So are you, you okay with vaping and smoking? Are you guys good with that? or No, no. not at all. Yeah. Yeah. We were smoking in our house, and then Jason couldn't come in because... He don't like the smell of smoke, so. I'm allergic to smoke. I used to smoke, but yeah. I'm allergic to it now. So, it hurt Years us ago. badly that we couldn't have him come in our house. 
so we just stopped smoking in our house. And we've cut back like a lot, a lot. Yeah, so so they're on the path. They don't they don't, they feel like they shouldn't be doing it because they know it's an addiction. They know they the, some of the stuff that they're drinking too, some of the monster drinks that they're drinking. They feel like that's an addiction because they can't quit. Anything you can't stop doing is an addiction. It doesn't matter what it is. If you if you if you if you're chocolate hungry all the time and you have to have chocolate to to, to not be mad, you know. <laughs> Just, you know, I have to give her a sneakers bar every now and then. It's like, just here, just eat this. It's going to be good. Tootsie Rolls. We got Tootsie Rolls. I mean, just, just feed it to her. And it's like, it, everything calms down. But uh, we're trying to, no, really, we're trying to break those addictions that, uh, off of her, the chocolate and, the, and all those things. That, but, you know, guys, listen. Um, God's got you. You're, you're amazing. Don't let the enemy speak into that. You know you know the things that God is asking you to step down from. Yeah. Um, um, I, it was easy for me. I just cold turkeyed everything. You know, I, when I, yeah, just everything. I just cold turkeyed everything. I just like, I'm done. I quit. I'm done. And I never touched it again. And so for you guys, you know, um, it might not be that way. So it's a process for you guys. And so even after today, I know you're going to um, get some even more victory over this because the value that this body sees in you, the value that these people see in you, the victory is great. And, you know, and I went to Cody's house and I said, um, and I, he said, come in. Uh, the smoke was rolling out. I'm like, ah, I can't, you know. Was, um, and, and literally it broke my, I mean, it, it, it broke my heart because when he said to me, we have stopped smoking in our house so you could come in our house. I went in their house the other day, man, it smelled great, it was clean, it was nice, and I love it, so I can go visit them now, and, and, uh, and so thank you guys for honoring me with that, and thank you for honoring the Lord, Lord with that. So, Shelly has something else to say. Well, what I wanted to share, and I assume you're going into this. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't step into my I won't crown. step okay. in. Okay. It's so. all good. Well, it's part of it. No, it's okay, not. Okay, you start. Yeah, you start what? We're not even there yet, Shelly. I mean, it's my question. We're not even there. <laughs> we have a great relationship. We really do. Um, uh, so, you guys, and we'll go, we'll, we'll go into that now. Cause we got 15. So, you guys basically lived life before you come to life of love, you live life like strung out, drugged out, you know. And Jessica, you said this is the first time in your life that you've not been high at all, period, across the board. Yes. Like zero. <laughs> like she don't, she's like, I feel the spirit of God. I'm not high. I don't smoke pot anymore, you know, because she thought pot was okay. So she was like, pot's good, pot's all right, you know. And so I gave her this explanation one day and she goes, I never thought of it that way. And, and, um, so um, she's even, they're even, you know, pot free. They're just, they're free of all these things that um, the enemy wants to drag you down with or hold you down with. And so um, how's it feel to be free? How's it feel to be free? It feels amazing. <laughs> yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So he's got a mic now. And um, <laughs> Lord help us. So Cody, what about... What about you? I mean, what, what, is it, what does it feel like to be free from, from running, just free from running, you know, looking over your shoulders all the time? Um, what, how does that feel to you? It feels amazing. Like, I love to get high off God, not drugs now. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. And I, there's, a, there's a transition. So when they asked Jesus to come in their heart, where they, they, they had been up and down in church their whole life, um, and in and out of Sunday school and stuff like that, but um, when they come to life of love, it, they they just got an encounter with Jesus like they'd never had before. Jessica was so hurt by church and she didn't want to go to church, and but when she stepped into here, you guys loved on her so well that she's like, "This is where I got to be. This is where I need to be." And um, and I want to talk about your your guys's finances because I know you guys were like living with your mother, you living with your mom. And, you know, you got kicked out of where you were living with your mom and it got her kicked out of the place as yeah, well. Because I was selling drugs. Because you were selling drugs. And so, um, 
So they had nowhere. They were homeless for a while, living out of their car. I mean, this van that he was using stickers to cover up the um, scratches on the van and stuff like that. And it was just, I mean, it was, it was loading it. I remember Cody always had the van loaded with scrap. I mean, there was always scrap in the van. I mean, like loaded down. I mean, he was like, he wants scraps. He's like, yeah, I'll be, I mean, I'm scraping for pennies. And he would like just take every little piece of aluminum or anything from the church and just like, I'm, he piled it up and went and got couple dollars for it you know and uh and so but you guys a while back you guys had taken a challenge that um and we're going to offer it we're going to offer it again to you guys today that's why we're taking offering last because i want you to know the impact um this is god's guarantee they took this guarantee and um and i'll let you read it shall i since you're already here she on can you hear me can you hear me now no, you don't, there's no button to turn this one on. I mean, this is... Can test? Nobody can hear me? Nope. Okay. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Proverbs 3, 9. So last year around this time, Pastor Jason did a four-week teaching on the principles of giving. And this is a money back guarantee. And these little guarantee cards are sitting at each black table with the wooden bowls. It's a money back guarantee. So like anything so this you is, pour into this, yeah. it's, if, it's money back this guarantee. This is what he challenged everybody. If you commit to bring your tithe, which is 10% of your income to Life of Love Ministry Center as a means of tithing to the Lord each week for 90 days, the Lord will bless you. However, at the end of the 90 days, if you have not been blessed or become worse off financially or think it was a mistake, Life of Love will refund 100% of the money you gave, Pastor Jason Abney. So the card says, I already tithe 10% of my income. I will begin to give 10% to Life of Love, and I will take the challenge to begin to tithe to Life of Love. Yeah. So these are the so, three little challenges that yeah, you so could mark. so if you take the challenge, I, 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 my promise right now on live, live camera, if you take the challenge and you do not get blessed and you, your finances don't increase, things don't change in your life financially, I, we will personally give you 100% back of your money that you pour into it. It's so a guarantee. Sh- like I'm going to share. It's a, it's a, it's a, three months. Do it for three months and watch what the Lord watch does. What happens. Let, let, are we going to let them share? Are you going to yeah, share? No, I want to share not only about your tithe, share that, how you started, but then what happened in your life with your living situation, your car situation, all the above. There's several other things. I mean, it's been a 180 change in every aspect of their life. What you started out doing and where you are today even, what financially, um, giving and your income. This, Larry, this is, this, is, this is almost a week, the next, very next week, this stuff started happening. Oh, he wasn't working when we first started it, so it was only my income, and we was only given like 5 or $10. <laughs> and then his boss hired him back to his job, so then he had income too, so we just started increasing it. And we've gotten our own apartment and a new vehicle. It's just, <laughs> and we're never broke. Like we used to be broke all the time. Like scraping pennies, like you said. But now we always have money. Yeah. So they were, so, yeah. So, has, we're beyond blessed, like you say that. <laughs> yeah. So. We're beyond blessed. They're beyond blessed. So Co- Cody was running around dealing with drugs while she was trying to work a job. They were both still. Um, in and out of, of this lifestyle and they said we're going to make this challenge we're going to take this challenge and I remember they didn't want to live you know with mom because they wanted to be on their own and uh, you know Cody it was the rough situation for him and Jessica's mom and now Jessica's mom loves him and honors him and because they she sees what he's done in in, the, in their life and how he's changed her life and so they went from like riding that bicycle. I mean, I remember even, even back in front here, Cody's walk is even different. If you knew his walk then, how he actually walked is different now than he walked then because God changes it. Old things pass away, all things become new. And that's what the Lord says. 
all things become new. When you come to Christ and your life is not changed for the better, you probably didn't come to Christ because old things will pass away and all things will become new if you really, really want and seek after heaven and seek after God. And I know that um, that you guys were living out of your car kind of, you know, and, um, and they went from, I mean, just a week later, they went from this change, this, this like metamorphosis that happened in your life. They started out, what did you guys start out? Do you remember what you started out giving to the church? Like five dollars. Like five dollars. They started out giving five dollars. And then it went from five to whatever else it went to, and then whatever else. And so where are you guys at today, like in your giving? Well, I want to add. So, you know, we always pray over the offering. We always have. We've always been appreciative if it's a dime given. Yeah. Because it, it, to us, it has never mattered what the people give. It's just that you're obedient to what the Lord is saying to give is the key. So we obviously knew Jessica and Cody's name was on the card. And he had marked on his little envelope five bucks. We had to keep track of it and in case we had to give them their money back. You know, we input that in the, the system. And I'm not joking. I would sometimes just cry and weep mm -hmm. because week to week to week to week, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And then they got their apartment that they didn't think they could get. Yep. Then they end up getting a different vehicle. And all along, they're still raising their giving yeah. it has been so i mean just to see the hand of the lord relationships have been restored um just so many things blessings have come your way people giving you things that they didn't have to not me, not me. Um, so it's just it's been so it's been so cool seeing just the whole transformation process and and being this close to it it's just such a blessing and encouragement yeah so it's really cool so um and i know that um as we had to monitor that for the 90 days they went from five dollars to listen in 90 days to giving a hundred dollars and i know that they wasn't making a thousand dollars a week but they went from five dollars to giving a hundred dollars and what she's what you guys said to me in the in the in the room that they have money left over. They used to go from day to day to week to week, and they have money left over each week that they have extra money left over every week now, more and more and more and more. So they're, they're getting ready to start a savings account to start saving money. And so that is so powerful that what God took someone who was so far down, reaching up to grab rock bottom to a place of prospering in a place of, of abundance and so thank you guys for making the challenge thank you guys for serving god so well and just displaying all that he has for you um and what we're going to do right now um the enemy's not going to steal this moment so we're going to have randy come up and we're going to have um shelly and i Faye, if you come up here for a minute and and we're just going to pray over um over these two that the enemy's hearing what we're saying he's gonna he's trying to make plans already to come and destroy what we just said um all the schemes that he does and so we just we're just gonna we're you guys can come up here we're just gonna pray over them carlene you can come up as well i'm sorry i didn't um linda linda come up here um we're gonna we're gonna pray over them that god is going to just encounter them even more the Lord has so much for every one of us if you've been through this in life if you've been through these kind of things in life if you've been through these struggles and battles God has so much for you he wants so much for you he desires his heart desires that none perish that all make heaven so we're going to open up the altars here in a minute and we're going to pray over you but right now we're going to seal this right now we're going to seal the peace in heaven over Cody and Jessica right now. From this day forward, they're going to prosper even more. From this day forward, the enemy cannot get in front of them. He has to stay behind them. Every scheme, every plan formed against them will not prosper. For they are both children of God. 
So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just bless them this morning. We bless these two, Lord. We thank you for them. We thank you for their hearts. Thank you for all that they're pouring into you. Thank you for all of heaven coming down into them right now. Lord, we just seal this with a hedge of protection about them. God, you would set your warring angels about them. God, that nothing, nothing formed against them would prosper, not one thing. So we just say right now, Satan, get behind in Jesus' name because you have to come through all of us to get to them. So we just thank you, Father, right now for your love and mercy to them. And we just break off trauma right now in Jesus' name. We speak peace in those places where trauma was right now in Jesus' name. Any empty place that was void right now, we fill it with all of heaven, all the goodness of heaven. We just go to into their hearts, in and out of their hearts right now, Lord. Anything that's void, any door that's jiggling, that's unlocked, that shouldn't be unlocked, Lord. Any door that's, that's shimmied open, we just shut all doors right now in Jesus' name. We open all doors that heaven has for them. Any door that the enemy would try to come back in and kill, steal, and destroy, we break those things off right now. And we lock those doors right now in Jesus' name. Every wall come down right now in Jesus' name. Every trigger turn into a testimony right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for this couple. And Lord, we honor you as we honor them. We speak value into their lives. We speak, God, value into their lives. They are, they are worthy because you're worthy, Lord. They're sons and daughters of the Most High King. God, and we just ask right now that you will bless them with all the blessings that you have. Take them, Lord, through that expedition mode right now, expediting them to the next phase in their life, Lord, the next step on the high, Lord. We thank you, and we love you, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.